A solid foundation is critical, so making sure your tech stack doesn't, well, tip over. Looking for a reliable building block for your small business network? The Cisco CBS 350 is simple to deploy, simple to manage, and provides a solid foundation for business applications. In this edition of Tech Talks, we'll go over some of the features and configurations of the CBS 350 next. Let's get started. First, we'll talk about the global LEDs found on the device. System LED lights flash steady green when the switch is powered on, when booting, when performing self-tests or acquiring an IP address. If the LED flashes amber, the switch has detected a configuration file error or hardware or firmware failure. To access the switch with the web-based interface, you must know the IP address of the switch we're using. The switch is using the factory default IP address of 192.168.1.254 with a subnet at slash 24. When the switch is using the factory default IP address, the system LED flashes continuously. When the switch is using a DHCP server assigned IP address or administrator has configured a static IP address, the system LED is a steady green. DHCP is also enabled by default. Our default password and username will be Cisco. When we first log into the switch, we will need to change the username and default password. Under Dashboard, the CBS350 offers simple, intuitive dashboards and automates the deployment, monitoring, and lifecycle management of the switch. We can see a resource utilization graph, as well as the system health display and a brief glance at the RAM logs. Stacking is available on the CBS350 with as many as four switches. It is available on 24-port and 48-port 4X models. The product supports many features, Therefore, the web GUI includes hundreds of configuration and display modes. These pages are divided into either basic or advanced. Now let's go through the getting started section. This will guide us through how to install and manage our device. We can use the various links and follow the on-screen instructions to quickly configure our switch. We can enter the system location and the system contact. Next, we can select the default host name or create a new one. We can use this screen to create a new IP interface for the system. Choosing none will keep the current configurations. We can keep or change the username and password on this screen. Next, we can set the system clock from an SMTP server, or we can import the date and time from a local computer. Up next, we'll demonstrate the VLAN configuration wizard we can choose the interface that we would like to use as our trunk interface. In this example, we're going to use port 1, since this will be the port connected to our router. We can also create a new VLAN from this screen. We'll create VLAN 20 and name it Admin. We'll choose port 1 as a trunk port that will pass VLAN 20 untaped traffic. We can also add access interfaces to VLAN 20. We'll choose ports 13 through 16 as access ports for VLAN 20. Click Apply to save. There's also a configuration wizard for ACL configuration, but don't worry, this topic will be discussed in another video. We're now gonna take a look at file management. We'll click on Administration, choose File Management, and select Firmware Operations. A file management system is an application that is used to store and arrange the access files that are on our device. The system files contain information such as configuration info and firmware images. A ton of actions can be performed with these files, such as selecting the firmware file from which the device boots or modifying various types of configuration files internally. We can also copy files to and from an external device. We'll now go to the system log under administration. We'll click on system log and log settings. The system logs are enabled by default. This section describes the system logging, which enables a device to generate multiple independent logs. Each log is a set of messages describing system events. The device generates the following local logs. The log sent to the console interface, the logs written in a cyclical list of logged events in the RAM, and logs erased when the device reboots. The logs written into a cyclical log file saved to the flash memory 
and persist across reboots. In the remote log server, we can send messages to remote syslog servers in the form of SNMP traps and assist log messages. Another useful feature within the switch is the ping, and it's located under administration. The ping utility will test if the remote host can be reached, and it measures the round trip for packets sent. Ping operates by sending internet control message protocols, echo request packets, to the target host and waits for ICMP response. Enhanced security capabilities provide a solid foundation to safeguard the privacy of customers. Cisco Business 350 Series switches provide the advanced security features we need to protect our business data and keep unauthorized users off the network. Embedded Secure Socket Layer SSL encryption protects management data traveling to and from the switch. Support for advanced network security applications, such as the IEEE 802.1x port security, tightly limits access to a specific segment of our network. The Cisco Business 350 series switches are available with as many as 40 power over Ethernet ports. This capability simplifies advanced technology deployments, such as IP, telephones and wireless, and IP surveillance. It does this by allowing users to connect and power network endpoints over a single Ethernet cable. And that's our walkthrough. Those are some of the features and configurations of the CBS 350. Thanks for watching this edition of Tech Talks. We'll see you next time.